of all the stupid things to slap your name on, a steak? And I think the company lasted for two months? Ridiculous. Sold in the Sharper Image catalog, this was the 90s thing I've ever heard. I'm Tommy Vitor. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And today we're going to be drafting Donald Trump's biggest business disasters. And we're talking about this right now because we are in the midst of yet another litigious effort against Donald Trump. That is the New York Attorney General's trial against the Trump Organization mm -hmm. for $250 million. A lot of cash on the line here. A lot for of cash. And, and the craziest part is that he's already lost. He's already guilty. At this point, it's just to determine the damages that he's going to pay. So it's either going to be really bad for him or really, really bad for him. Yeah. All right, Brian, we're going to flip a coin. The winner goes first and drafts first. So here we go. Heads. Heads it is. All right, let's do it. For my first choice, I'm going to go with a curveball here. This one is highly unexpected, but bear with me on this one. Let's go the New Jersey Generals. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Everything that we touched in the city has, in fact, really worked out, and outside of the city, has really worked out, and against big odds. Since he purchased the New Jersey Generals for about the cost of one of his deluxe apartments, he has created a lot of commotion. So there he is, the owner of a 6-12 and 12 team, but an owner who likes to create. He'll find credibility for his team in the USFL, he says, even if he has to build it himself. So the reason that Donald Trump bought a USFL team is because he wanted so badly to be an NFL owner, but he mm -hmm. couldn't get into that club. He couldn't figure out how to buy an NFL team. None of the other owners wanted him to be a part of it. But because he has such a fragile ego, he had to then go buy the New Jersey Generals and the USFL. At that point in the early 80s, the USFL played in the spring and the NFL, the big leagues, like the varsity players, they played in the fall. And so he moved to have the USFL play in fall and be a direct competitor to the NFL. And he also moved to sue the NFL in an antitrust suit. So they, they went to court and the USFL actually won the antitrust suit, but they were awarded only a dollar. And the USFL executive directors said, quote, the NFL turned around and said it's the $1 league and they brought out their media guns and just crushed us. It just broke the will of most of the owners. The USFL played a 1985 season, but they postponed their 1986 season and they never played a game after that. So... Not only did Donald Trump buy a team that, I mean, you heard from the clip, was 6-12, and 12, so it's a failed team, he actually ended up destroying the entire league. It is pretty impressive to not only bankrupt your own team, but to bankrupt the entire league. <laughs> to end the league. That takes effort. Yeah, it um, never recovered after what Donald Trump did. All right, good pick. I'm going to go with, for my first pick, Trump Stakes. I think we have a clip. When it comes to great stakes, I've just raised the stakes. Trump stakes are the world's greatest stakes, and I mean that in every sense of the word. Trump stakes are by far the best tasting, most flavorful beef you've ever had, truly in a league of their own. And believe me, I understand stakes. It's my favorite food. And these are the best. I love the quote, uh, Donald Trump has the best stakes, and I mean that in every sense of the word. <laughs> how, many, how many different ways, is there, how many different meanings does that have? Sir, you can't rhyme stakes with stakes, <laughs> even if you're spelling it differently <laughs> with a different meaning. It doesn't really work that way. Okay, so the thing about this blockbuster Trump stakes business he launched is it was discontinued after two months. <laughs> there were a bunch of reviews of the steaks. They tasted mediocre, but they were very, very expensive. And then the CEO of the Sharper Image ultimately said, the net of all of that was we literally sold almost no steaks. <laughs> so it's like an enormous failure. But I do think Trump steaks tells the broader story of the recent sort of Trump businesses because almost all of the ones that he launched in the 2000s were designed to just grift off of The Apprentice. And yeah. this was one of them. Let's go for my next choice with Truth Social. Former President Trump's social media platform could be heading for a shutdown. According to corporate filings, Truth Social is burning through cash and just piling up losses. Records show that Truth Social has lost $31.6 million since being founded in 2021. All right, so obviously Truth Social is this Twitter clone that Trump established because he felt like Twitter was this left-wing cesspool and he had to counterbalance it with uh, Truth Social on the right, only for Elon Musk then to go ahead and, and purchase Twitter, thereby turning that into a actual right-wing cesspool. But now Trump is saddled with this entire social media network. But all of this headache was ultimately worth it because not only has Truth Social lost $73 million since its launch, 
but the app is currently the 143rd most popular social networking app on the App Store. Not the 143rd most popular app in the App Store. In that specific category, the social networking app category, it is behind giants such as AI Fantasy Chat and 3Fun, the threesome couples dating app. So you're on that, right? <laughs> <laughs> with my second pick, I am going to go with the Trump Shuttle. I think we have a clip. Trump shuttle's fleet consisted of 21 Boeing 727s. Trump spent $1 million to refurbish each plane. In true Trump fashion, he soon went after his competition. I love competing against Pan Am. If you've got to compete, I mean, if you've got to compete, Pan Am is the one you want to compete against. Trump suggested that Pan Am's financial struggles might jeopardize the airline's safety, and his remarks soon came back to bite him. Watch this, Don. Uh -oh. Whoa, my God! Whoa. In August of 1989, a Trump shuttle flight made an emergency landing in Boston when the plane's front landing gear malfunctioned. So that's not good. No surprise <laughs> that the... Trump shuttle started having some financial problems after that. So the shuttle service, I think he owned it from 89 to 1992. These were hourly flights from New York to Boston or New York to Washington, D.C. The airline business is notoriously hard. A lot of airlines struggle to be profitable. The shuttle business is actually pretty good. A lot of these shuttles are making money because there's a lot of business travelers who you can you know, charge a lot of money. It's a quick flight, pretty easy. But somehow Trump managed to screw it up. The company was never profitable. The traffic dipped in November of 1989, and then they ran out of cash and they defaulted in September of 1990 and the Trump shuttle ceased to exist. So even a business that was set up for success, he overpaid on the front end and went bankrupt on the back end. Sounds like Trump. Tough. All right, for my next choice, I'm gonna go with the Trump Taj Mahal. This is what the casino looked like when Donald Trump opened it in 1990. Mr. Trump, good luck to you. Thank you. Bill O'Reilly, then the anchor of Inside Edition, interviewed Trump for the opening. Even 27 years ago, Trump was griping about the press. You have a lot of very dishonest reporters, in my opinion. And I mean dishonest. I'm not talking about they're slightly off. I mean they are totally dishonest, where they'll report things knowingly that they're wrong. Trump sold his interest in the Taj Mahal in 2009. Like many businesses in Atlantic City, the casino fell on hard times. Now, it's just a memory. So Trump opened the Taj Mahal in 1990. He had called it the eighth wonder of the world, very deservedly so. The eighth wonder of the world is in Jersey? That, that's it, in I New Jersey. It quickly became uh, like a hub for Russian mobsters who lived in Brooklyn who needed a spot to gamble. In 2015, the Department of Treasury settled an investigation with the Trump Taj Mahal. They levied a $10 million fine for, Oof. quote, significant and long-standing money laundering violations, which were described as willful and repeated. Again, this was a business genius. He bought the Atlantic City Casino for $1.2 billion in 1990. In 2017, when it was sold, it went for $0.04 cents on the dollar, $50 million total. And then in 2021, it was demolished in front of a crowd. 3,000 sticks of dynamite were used <laughs> to blow the thing up. And, and that, Tommy, is the art of the deal. <laughs> with my next pick, I'm going to go with the Tour de Trump. Let's watch a clip. The Tour de Trump stands ready to take its place alongside the great classics of Europe. But unlike those European races, this event has no history. It's creating its own history as we speak. And the man who has put his name on the event is Donald Trump. I really look to the future. I always do, with investments, with deals, with events, with anything. And I think this is an event that can be tremendous in the future. And it can really very much rival the Tour de France. Who wants to watch the Tour de Trump? Are you kidding me? This was right after the art of the deal. So this guy was slapping his name on anything that would have him, that would give him a quick buck. The first race was met by a bunch of anti-Trump protesters who were just geniuses ahead of their time. They held placards reading, fight Trumpism, the art of the deal equals the rich get richer, and Trump equals Lord of the Flies. There was apparently a bike race in Colorado that was launched called the Tour de Rump, and Trump sent them a cease and desist of letter because he's, he's so fun. But I just find this one amazing. It's like, you know this guy doesn't give a shit about Bike racing, apparently, like, someone just floated the title by him. He kind of liked the pun and was like, yeah, let's go with it. Yeah. All right, for my next choice, I'm going to go with The Ultimate Merger. Let's see the clip on this, this one. This is amazing. I never even heard of this. This season on The Ultimate Merger. Amorosa. Mr. Trump. My friend. You've been very good for me. And you're my pal. 
But you know, I'd love to have you meet some guy. Is there anybody that can tame you? <laughs> I have 12 men. I want you to go out to Las Vegas, meet these guys, and you're going to decide whether or not there's somebody for you. I hope I can find him. Obviously, a dating game show where everybody competed for the love of Amorosa. She had been a former Apprentice contestant, and she would eventually become a Trump administration staffer, which I don't know who this reflects the worst on, but probably the government. Apparently she worked for Al Gore, too, before that. <laughs> oh, my God. How did that happen? Well, here's the best part. The final contestant was technically still married. And I love so the that. show <laughs> finished without a winner. Like even he too. figured out how to break a show <laughs> where all she had to do was just find somebody to marry her on a dating show. By the way, it was 12 dudes apparently hand selected by Trump, so you know, tough sledding there for her. They all had to live together at the Trump Hotel in Las Vegas, so maybe that was fun. But I, I do love that. That she got to the very end, there was one guy left and he was like, Ah, it turns out I'm just separated. He's <laughs> like, I would love to. Here's the thing. <laughs> I'm going to go with Trump Vodka. It's a smooth vodka. It's a great tasting vodka. And I'm very proud of the fact, actually, that I don't drink. But it's a vodka that people really like. And as you know, it's taken off like crazy. I actually don't drink at all. So I can't tell you about it personally, but I have a lot of friends that do enjoy vodka and drink it. You know, they were really surprised with what, what, what they turned out. You know, that's what happens when you put the two people that are the best at what they do together and you get them to work on something, whether it's the bottle, the vodka, itself, everything, you're going to turn out a great product. And that's what it's done yet again. Look, I respect the fact that Donald Trump doesn't drink because he had, had some real horrible alcoholism in his family and like good for him that's the right choice but then you probably shouldn't be a vodka front man so trump vodka was launched in 2005 it ceased production under the trump name in 2011 again this is one of the many businesses that were launched with his name on them just to ride the coattails of the relatively apprentice. successful considering steak lasted 60 days and uh, this one got all of five years before that brand yeah landed. their slogan was success distilled woof but apparently every element of the of the company was a mess. The distillery was a mess. Their relationship with the bottling company was bad. They were like in lawsuits with each other. The finances were a mess. But Trump was out there predicting that the TNT, which is a Trump and tonic, would be the most popular drink in America. And uh, a little footnote, I read in an article that Kim Kardashian attended the January 2007 release party in LA. That checks out. So good for Kim, showing great judgment for decades now. That checks out. All right, for my last choice here, I'm going to go with... Trump the board game. Let's see the clip on this one. Everything's set for tonight, Mr. Trump. I wonder what Trump's game is this time. Trump's got a new game. Trump's got a new deal. What's your game, Donald? Heard about Trump's new deal? What? What? Trump has a new game. What is it? Mr. Trump. 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 Mr. Tr
fiction. It was a it was a right. fake reality TV show. That Predicated on nothing because, as we've spoken about, all of his actual business ventures went to shit. Yeah. So eventually, NBC fired him, uh, as he mentioned in that clip there, because he made unbelievably racist comments uh, about Mexicans at his announcement speech when he ran for president. I mean, I think Trump running for president and him being on the show is probably not going to work no matter what he said. It's a real bummer that Mark Burnett ever pitched the show to him because I think it's probably the reason he's president. Agreed. Thanks, Mark. This episode of Liberal Tears is brought to you by Z-Biotics. Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol, drink responsibly, and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. John, you just heard me read all that, but like I'm preaching in the choir here. I mean, we've been loving Zbiotics for years. In fact, you purchased Zbiotics for an entire wedding party uh, a couple of months ago. Our friend Quinn getting married he got married recently and in wisconsin so there's some beers that's right and he, and before we went to the wedding he was like hey you guys are always talking about z-biotics is that like a real that does that work you know what and then i just that was my wedding present just sent a bunch of z-biotics to the president to the uh, wedding and uh then we all had z-biotics and guess what the next day people were had a pep in their step they were at the the goodbye breakfast all s- smiling and happy that stuff works you heard it from us, folks. Zbiotics actually works. If you go to zbiotics.com slash rank, you'll get 15% off your first order when you use the code rank at checkout. That's zbiotics.com slash rank. Use the code rank for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this show. So that's our draft. Now we're going to make a, a quick 30-second you know, pitch for why we should be the winner. I do want to thank everyone. A quick pander who watched our last video ranking the worst members of Congress. We got over half a million views. Yeah. We did like 50% of an average Brian video on that one. So, well, you know, I'm the, I'm the grasshopper. I'm happy, here. To, happy to bring you along my coattails, Tom. Yeah, for, seriously, I'm just <laughs> chasing your clout. So, Brian won the toss, won the flip. You're up. All right, let's do this. Not that I need to, but here we go. We start off with Trump the board game, a blatant ripoff of Monopoly, and just yet another instance of Trump ripping off some successful brand, slapping his name on it, and watching it fail. Then we have the ultimate merger, which was a dating contest to win the heart of Amorosa, who would eventually become his advisor in the White House. It was such a disaster, like everything else Donald Trump touches, that the final contestant on a dating show was technically still married and thus unable to actually marry Amorosa. There was the Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. The U.S. Department of the Treasury's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network settled an investigation into their business with a $10 million civil fine for significant and longstanding money laundering violations. Then we move over to Truth Social, which... Per usual is another ripoff. It was a Twitter ripoff this time. Lost $73 million since its launch and is currently sitting pretty at the number 143 in social networking apps in the App Store. And of course, my personal favorite, a curveball here, but the New Jersey Generals with the U.S. Football League. So Donald Trump wanted so badly to be part of the NFL Owners Club. They didn't want him in. So instead, he tried to take on the NFL by buying a USFL team. He sued the NFL and he won, but he was granted a dollar. So not only did Donald Trump oversee or own a football team with a losing record, he literally ended the entire professional sport league. All right, guys, here's why I won. Of all the stupid fucking things to slap your name on, a steak, and I think the company lasted for two months, ridiculous. She sold in the Sharper Image catalog, this was the 90s thing I've ever heard. Trump shuttle. <laughs> he overpaid for a very successful airline business, and then he ran the nose of the plane and the business itself into the ground. <laughs> Literally. Incredible. The tour to Trump, I'm sorry, all you bike enthusiasts, but your sport sucks and it's boring and it's ridiculous that he tried to recreate it here. What a stupid thing to do in America. Trump vodka, the TNT is not the most popular drink in the country. And then, again, The Apprentice is the most successful thing Trump's ever done by far, and yet he didn't even want to do it. He said that reality television was, quote, for the bottom feeders of society, and I will let you all decide whether that's true or not. But uh, it sucks that that show existed because that's why he's president. So uh, as we discussed in my pander, half a million people watched our last episode. And I won with 51%. It was a nail biter until the very, very end. It was. So, Brian, as you know, as the listeners know, the viewers know, for some reason we do a punishment. It's making both of our lives hell. (laughs) For today, we ordered for you 
trump the board game. Oh, So what's going to happen God. is we'll cut together a little highlight, low light reel of you enjoying yourself. Great. Learning about your hero, yeah. Donald Trump. I Are you that'll, excited? That'll be really good for my brand is, uh, is me playing Donald Trump's board game. Let's do it. I'm going to be ducking in and out making sure you're following <laughs> the 12 pages of the rules. You, you don't want to play along with us, Tommy? I did want to pay. For the, for the viewers? I'm going to be, I got to record a quick uh, video about Osama bin Laden and the teens. Oh, here we go. But then I'll be back. And the best news, this game only has a 90 minute runtime. So we're here to play Trump the Trump the Games. It has a, a score of a 4.4 on Board Game Geek. Uh, out which, of five. Out of ten. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. So now let's uh, now let's get into the rules here. Okay. Uh, Gameplay. On your turn, you should first draw a trump card from the top of the draw pile. If you forget to do this before taking the next part of your turn, you do not get to draw one until your next turn. Be rolling the dice and moving around the board. Okay, so now let's break down what number one was. Right, the best news, this game only has a 90 minute run. When it comes to great stakes, I've just raised the stakes. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired, Brian. You're fired. You're fired. Get out of here. From Maggie, from Bradley. I think you'll like it. So that's our show for this week. Uh, let us know who won in the comments. Let us know what you think about the show, how it's going, what else we should rank, and uh, subscribe. And don't ever, you. don't ever subject me to ninety minutes of that again. Not, not fun. We had a not great fun. Time. I'd rather eat the chip. I had a great time. No, no chips. Yeah.